In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Linux inside a virtual machine in VirtualBox. I already have VirtualBox installed on my machine. If you don't, you can go to virtualbox.org, download it, and install it. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to install Linux Mint. This is my preferred distribution. I use Linux Mint Mate. I have a higher end system, so I can handle this window manager. If you have a lower end system with fewer resources such as RAM or processor speed, I recommend using Linux Mint XFCE. It is a more lightweight window manager that runs better on older machines. I've already downloaded Linux Mint Mate. It's on my desktop, so let's go ahead and get started installing. First, we click on New to create a new virtual machine. We need to give it a name. It doesn't really matter what it is, just as long as you can recognize it. It recognizes that it is Linux, and I have a 64-bit operating system for my host machine, so I can install a 64-bit uh, Linux virtual machine. I recommend allocating at least 2 gig of RAM if you can afford it, depending on how much um, RAM you have on your host machine. We're going to create a virtual hard disk now. A virtual box disk image is fine. And we want it to be dynamically allocated. This means that VirtualBox will tell Linux that you can have, for example, a 15 gig hard drive, but VirtualBox will only use what is needed to hold on the all the files on the host file system. You can click Next. The default is 8 gig. I've found that that's a little small for what we're trying to do. 15 bit gig should be more than sufficient if you have enough room on your hard drive. Now, we've created the virtual machine, but before we install Linux, we do need to change a couple of settings to make things more usable. First, I recommend increasing the video memory to the maximum. This will allow us to eventually increase the graphics resolution of the virtual machine. It's found here under Display. While also in Settings, we need to add the virtual ISO we downloaded of Linux Mint to the virtual uh, DVD drive. I click on the empty uh, optical drive. Then I can choose the drop down here and choose a disk file. Mine is on the desktop, so I can choose it, click open. Now I've essentially inserted a virtual disk inside the virtual disk drive so I can install it. Click OK, and we're ready to start the virtual machine. It will take a moment for it to boot, and we'll start Linux Mint. If we let the timer right run out, it will automatically uh, choose that option. I could go full screen here with uh, the window, but the window of Linux inside here will stay the same size. Eventually, we'll do something so we can full screen, make it full screen. So now we've booted up into what's called a live installation. We haven't installed anything on uh, the hard drive yet, but we're, we're running Linux. So we can click on Install Linux Mint. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I'm going to choose the settings for my region where I live as we go through the installation. Choose the appropriate settings for your region. So, English. I'm going to use the US English keyboard layout. For this installation, we don't need to install any multimedia codecs. If you are going to be using your Linux installation to watch movies, listen to music, you may want to do this, but we don't need to do that here. Since this is a virtual machine and there isn't anything on the hard drive, we can erase the disk and just install Linux Mint normally. 
in a later video, I will demonstrate uh, or I'll explain uh, different partitions and things like that. So if you want to, you can go back and later and create another Linux installation where you've customized the disks, but we don't need to do that now. But continue. Choose the correct time zone. And then we're going to create a user. So I'm going to simply create a user, Bob. Computer name, you can have this be whatever you want. And then you can choose a password. I've chosen a weak password of password, but that's OK. This is a demonstration machine. And it's also just a virtual machine that I won't expose to the internet. So now it'll go through and install. This will take a while, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll start it back up once it's done installing all the files. Once installation is finished, you can restart the virtual machine. It will prompt you to remove the disk and hit enter. On my machine, I don't have to remove the disk from the virtual machine's virtual drive, so I just hit enter. The machine will reboot and you will be prompted to log in using the username and password you created during installation. Again, depending on the speed of your computer, this may take a few minutes. Your system is now installed and ready to go. However, one of the first things uh, you should do is install the VirtualBox additions. To do that, go up to Devices and insert Guest Editions CD image. Sometimes this will auto run, sometimes it won't. If it won't, you can simply right click and choose Open with Auto Run Prompt. You can choose the, the defaults here, run it. Provide your password of your user. Now this should install tools that enable the Linux system to work with VirtualBox. This will enable you to do things like share a clipboard with your host system and most importantly, that we'll see here in a minute, when we resize the VirtualBox window, the desktop will be resized with it. Note that this won't work in some Linux distributions. In a later video, we will be using CentOS to demonstrate some Linux functionality. By default, this VirtualBox Guest Edition CD does not work on CentOS you have to install extra files and packages to get it to work. This can take just a moment. Again, depending on your system, it may take longer. So it's done. You can hit Enter. And before, for those settings to take effect, we need to restart the virtual machine. Quit and restart. I can check to see if the disk drive is uninstalled. I can remove the disk. It won't let me to here. I'll show you how to do it in a minute once the system is booted. So now the system is usable. I can go full screen and it will resize. I've found that sometimes the desktop background uh, doesn't really work well. So if you do it manually, it redraws it incrementally and it should work. To eject the VirtualBox Guest Edition CD, you can right click, scroll down, 
and click eject, and you're done. You now have a Linux installation inside a virtual machine, and you're ready for the rest of the video series.